This audio presentation was pre recorded and edited for brevity and clarity. Hello, and welcome to the Bright Focus Glaucoma Chat. My name is Diana Campbell, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the chat today. Bright Focus Glaucoma Chats is a program in partnership with the American Glaucoma Society and is designed to provide people living with glaucoma and the family and friends that support them with information provided by glaucoma experts. The American Glaucoma Society counts the leading glaucoma specialists in the country in their membership, and we're looking forward to hearing them discuss many topics about glaucoma during this chat series. Today's topic is lifestyle changes to help glaucoma. Bright Focus Foundation funds some of the top scientists in the world who are working to find better treatments and ultimately cures for glaucoma, macular degeneration, and Alzheimer's disease. And we do events like today's chat to get the latest news from science as quickly as possible to families that are impacted by these diseases. You can find much more information on our website, www.brightfocus.org. Now, I'm pleased to introduce today's guest, Dr. Shivani Kamant, who is an assistant prof professor of ophthalmology and a glaucoma and anterior segment surgeon at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. She specializes in complex glaucoma, anterior, anterior segment disease, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, and cataract surgery, and has extensive experience in medical, laser, and surgical treatment of glaucoma, including combined cataract and glaucoma procedures, as well as the latest glaucoma surgical devices and intraocular lens implant technology. Dr. Kamat has also been involved in major clinical trials to advance the field. Welcome, Dr. Kamat. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're pleased you're here as well. So let's start with a quick note. While glaucoma is a group of eye diseases with multiple causes and contributions, the only currently FDA-approved treatments focus on reducing eye pressure. Today we will discuss lifestyle modifications that may reduce the chances, chances of vision loss. To start the conversation today, can you prevent glaucoma with healthy diet and exercise? Well, that's a good question. Um, you won't necessarily prevent glaucoma because glaucoma is caused by a variety of, of factors, um, and many of them are not in our control, like genetics. Um, it, it, certain healthy diet and exercise can help um, either decrease vision loss or decrease progression in glaucoma patients. So it won't necessarily prevent it, but it can still help you. Great. Um, are there particular exercises or activities that may make glaucoma worse, or are there activities that one should avoid so their glaucoma doesn't get worse? Yeah, so um, in general, glaucoma is not significantly impacted by most activities. Um, there are certain subtypes of glaucoma. So, for example, there is um, a type of glaucoma called pigmentary glaucoma that can be affected by very vigorous exercise. Um, in that type of glaucoma, the eye gives off tiny little particles of pigment that can build up in the drainage system of the eye, and then that leads to difficulty in the drainage of fluid, and then that causes the eye pressure to go up. So certain subtypes of glaucoma can be affected by vigorous exercise. Um, yoga is a very common type of exercise that people do, and it's a great form of exercise, but actually there have been studies that have shown that headstands um, that a lot of people do while practicing yoga can cause a significant increase in eye pressure. So people with severe glaucoma in general should try to avoid um, doing, doing headstands. Um, on the flip side, actually, uh, there was a study out of India that showed that practicing meditation can be really beneficial for those with glaucoma. Um, 45 minutes of mindful meditation was actually associated with a five-point decrease in pressure. So um, that is something that can actually be really helpful. Um, and another, other studies have actually shown in general that exercise, like aerobic exercise, so jogging, walking, like anything get, that gets your heart pumping, um, can be helpful in glaucoma patients, particularly with slowing their visual field loss. So generally, you know, do, things that are heart healthy, like exercise, et cetera, can overall benefit not just your body, but your glaucoma. 
<laughs> that's great. That's really interesting about the meditation. Yeah, I that's really yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, we had one other question, I guess, in terms of exercise in general, you said heart healthy, um, and sounds like headstands obviously um, significantly can increase the pressure. How about other inverted poses? I think in particular people have asked about downward dog, downward facing dog. Um, yeah, should they that's, avoid that's a great question. I mean, if you could avoid things like in, just inverted poses, yeah, I mean, headstand was what was um, done in the paper, but yeah, downward dog even, like uh, trying to avoid those kinds of positions would probably be ideal in somebody with severe glaucoma. Great, thank you. I don't know if sleeping is considered an activity or not, but what about sleeping? Um, does the position you sleep in pose a risk? That's a good question. So. Some there is some evidence that um, like there for example we might see patients in clinic that where one eye is consistently worse getting worse and we don't always know why and then you ask them oh what side do you sleep on sometimes if people are like kind of face sleepers um, if say like they sleep there say it's their left side that they sleep on um, sometimes if they're sleeping on on their face they can push on their eye while they're sleeping and that can increase the pressure too so um, it, it, in theory, that could impact your glaucoma, but I would say in general, like unless you're sleeping like on your eye like that, you don't really need to worry too much about how you're sleeping. That's great. Uh, another thing we we do a lot in this day and age uh, is is uh, kind of look at our smartphones or tablets all day long. How yeah. does screen time um, affect eye pressure, or does it affect eye pressure? It, it doesn't. So I mean, it you won't you won't harm your your glaucoma by any means by using your phone. You're you're okay to do that. Great. Uh, the next question is about altitude. Um, do changes in altitude or places with higher altitudes um, make your eye pressure change if you're traveling, for example, or if you're regionally no. in a higher altitude zone? Higher altitude. Is there you know more or less concern? No, not really. I mean, so in terms of just regular glaucoma, where your the altitude of where you where you're at should not matter. Um, in some special instances, like people who have had retina surgery, sometimes they get gas put in their eye afterwards. So that's a, a specific circumstance where the gas can expand if you're in areas of higher altitude and the pressure can go up in your eye, and that's a that's a problem. But otherwise, in general, with glaucoma patients, it's not a problem. Great. Are there other um, things that cause extreme changes to eye pressure that people should be aware of um, or any cause for concern? Well, if someone just has, um, with open angle glaucoma, typically there aren't sudden or extreme changes in pressure. Um, I had mentioned something called pigmentary glaucoma a little bit ago. That that's a subtype of glaucoma, and some other like sort of secondary glaucoma, pseudo exfoliation glaucoma. Those glaucomas are known are sort of notorious for having large fluctuations with their eye pressure. It's not necessarily sudden, but they can have wide fluctuations. Otherwise, open angle glaucoma you typically don't get that. It's more common to have sudden changes in eye pressure in somebody who has what's called closed angle glaucoma. Um, in those cases, the drainage system of the eye can suddenly close off. It's almost like a sink that gets clogged. And if you think about how water can build up in a sink fairly quickly if the drain is clogged, it's the same concept. If the internal drainage system of the eye gets blocked or clogged for any reason, the fluid in the eye can build up rapidly and cause a problem. So sudden changes to pressure and extreme changes to pressure are more of a hallmark of closed angle glaucoma than open. That's a wonderful analogy. That helped a lot. Yeah, I'm good. What about what about diet? Um, are there vitamins that can help the glaucoma patient? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are. Um, so the, basically, the shorter answer is yes. Um, but you know, there are vitamins that have become popular uh, for macular degeneration, like the Areds formula, the Preservision brand uh, vitamins. And uh -huh. those are proven to help certain stages of macular degeneration, but there's no real equivalent pill like that for glaucoma. So some people will just take eye vitamins thinking it'll help glaucoma. It's not going to hurt you because at the end of the day, they're vitamins, but there's no proof necessarily that that formulation is going to slow down glaucoma. Um, there is There are studies that have shown that 
again, this is kind of talking about heart healthy. So like leafy greens like kale can be helpful. Um, there are some recent studies actually that studied um, uh, nicotinamide, which is basically vitamin B3 and pyruvate. And it looked at the effects of those on glaucoma and it found actually that oral administration of both of them led to improvement in visual fields compared to those that got a placebo. Um, so that was really interesting and really helpful because it showed like short term improvement and recovery for patients with glaucoma, but it doesn't, we don't have a lot of data yet to show um, like any longer term recovery, meaning do these vitamins truly reverse glaucoma damage or slow it down for the long term? We don't know that yet. And there are studies that are in the works looking at that. Um, but there, so there is some early evidence that show vitamin B3 and pyruvate can be helpful. Um, but right now we don't have enough data to know long term if that can make a big difference. Sure, that makes sense. That's really interesting that that research is coming along. I know it provides some comfort for folks with macular yeah. degeneration because they feel that, you know they're they're active and kind of preventing that vision loss. Um, oh, so that's exactly. great. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the hardest parts about glaucoma is feeling helpless. And you know, we we want you know you have to come in, you take your you take your drops, and people do all that stuff, and they still get worse, and or they can potentially get worse. So feeling like you have some control, I think, is really helpful. I, I agree. That's huge. Now, how about the things we drink? Um, what about caffeine uh, or alcohol? Are they, yeah, are they so, impact supplements? Yeah, the, these are all like, you know, definitely very commonly asked about and um, studied as well. So there's not really a strong link f between caffeine and glaucoma. Um, some recent studies have shown actually that drinking alcohol, particularly higher concentrations, like for example, like liquor versus beer, um, can be linked to glaucoma. And this study in particular was looking at a specific subtype called pseudoexfoliation glaucoma. Um, we don't know enough about the relationship to recommend decreasing alcohol and by how much, et cetera. We just know there is a link to increased alcohol um, concentration intake and this type of glaucoma. So kind of more to come with that. Um, and there's also, well, if we're talking about sort of lifestyle, like things that like recreational activities, like drinking and um, caffeine and alcohol there along those lines, there have been also studies with, with tobacco, with, with smoking. Um, and there was a large scale study that found that smokers actually had higher pressures, eye pressures compared to non-smokers. Um, and another study found that smoking actually could lead to a greater damage of what's called the nerve fiber layer. And so that's, th those, those are some of the tissues that make up the optic nerve. So basically it found that smoking could lead to damage of tissues that make up the optic nerve. Um, smokers tended to have an increased risk of developing glaucoma and heavy smoking led to an even higher risk. So even I mean, obviously, cutting down on smoking, quitting smoking is, is very, very difficult, but even decreasing the amount you smoke can can really help um, the, the state of your glaucoma. So it's helpful for the entire body, of course, we already know that, but it can also help help with glaucoma. Great. Thank you for that. I think with, um, particularly with alcohol, I think that kind of falls under the heart healthy diet as well, right? I think yeah, you know, limited exactly. alcohol is what's healthiest for your heart too. So that's kind of a great guideline for people to remember, I think, um, you know, to follow the heart healthy kind of lifestyle. Yeah. Basically anything that helps the rest of your body in general, it has been proven to help your eyes, which I guess is sort of common sense. But I mean, we have studies that even that prove that, which is really helpful. No, that is really helpful. That is really helpful. Um, are blood pressure and eye pressure related? So uh, not in the way that m many people think. So a lot of people think that if they have high, eye, high blood pressure that it causes or it can be linked to high eye pressure. And they're pretty independent, actually. Um, so one does not lead to the other. Um, however, certain kinds, people with certain kinds of glaucoma can actually be really sensitive to low blood pressure. 
um, particularly at night, so what we call nocturnal hypotension, um, that can predispose them to further optic nerve damage. So that is something like important to talk about with your primary care doctor if you may be someone that um, has low blood pressure. Oh, that's good information. Um, I know you hear a lot, you know, on commercials on TV and that sort of thing um, about, you know, talk to your doctor if you have glaucoma. Why do certain medications um, have that disclaimer to talk to your doctor before you take them, and how does that interact with glaucoma? Yeah, so most commonly um, the medications that, that mention that are ones that impact or that can cause worsening of closed angle glaucoma because so certain medications like certain antidepressants, antihistamines, they can alter the anatomy, the internal anatomy of the eye. And in somebody with open angle glaucoma, it, it doesn't really matter. But in somebody with closed angle glaucoma, that alteration in anatomy can be critical and it can lead to an attack, for example. So it, it, again, if someone has open angle glaucoma, they don't really need to worry if, if a medication is, says that. Um, the caveat to that sometimes is steroid use. So, and this could be for open or closed angle glaucoma, but um, some patients, particularly glaucoma patients, can be really sensitive to steroids, which can be, you know, ointments, creams, Flonase, injections, really any formulation of them, um, it can lead to your eye pressure to go up. So if you think you're going to be on a steroid for a prolonged period of time, I would discuss that with your eye care professional. Um, but otherwise, medications that typically say, ask your doctor, it's particularly for people who have closed angle glaucoma. So certainly I would run that by your doctor before um, taking anything just in case. That's great advice. Um, I have a follow-up question from one of the previous questions um, regarding sure. activity. If you suspect yeah. an activity that you are doing is affecting your eye pressure, what should you do? Or I guess my also interpretation of that is can, can the person actually tell that there is a change in their pressure? Oh, great question. So not all, most commonly no. Um, the, the times your eye pressure has to be really high typically for like 40 or so for somebody to notice, um, you know, that there's something going on. And that typically is in the form of eye pain, decreased vision. Some people get light sensitive. Um, but otherwise, a lot of times like more subtle increases in eye pressure are not really noticed by the eye. And so normal pressure is 10 to 22. Um, so it has to be significantly higher than that typically for people to notice. So you probably won't notice when you're doing any activity that, you know, that there's a problem. Um, if you have concerns, I would suggest asking the eye doctor because it, it you know, they, they know the um, more the intricacies of your eyes and like how bad your glaucoma is and they could help guide you. Um, but generally speaking, it's not something that you may pick up on on a day to day basis. Right. So I suppose if you're doing something that you're concerned about, it's something you should bring up with your eye care professional. Uh, yeah, I would. Care. Exactly. I would do that. I have another interesting question here from somebody who's listening. Um, are there eye exercises that can be done that, That's a um, great question. that might help? You know, unfortunately, not really. I think that's like a hot topic. A lot of people will go to like eye therapy and things like that. And it, it certainly won't harm you in any way. And uh, there are pr other conditions where it can be helpful. But with glaucoma, there's really not a lot you can do um, in terms of um, exercises or eye therapy or anything like that. Um, none of that is going to change the status of your glaucoma or the progression. Uh, really, other than some of the stuff that we're talking about right now, the best thing you can you can do is go to your appointments, take your eye drops, and um, you know listen to what your what your doctor recommends. Um, so, no exercises that currently have been shown to um, help glaucoma. Okay, my next um, kind of follow ups have to do more with food. Um, are there foods or medications um, that one with glaucoma should avoid at all costs? Not really. Um, foods, foods, no. There's nothing, no food that will uh, that's critical to avoid with glaucoma patients. Um, and medication, 
no, that that actually kind of links to the the our um, the question we just discussed. Uh, right. You know, you be you might want to exercise some caution with steroids if you're going to be using them long term. It doesn't mean you can't use them. I would just discuss with the doctor that hey, I'm starting steroids for this reason. This is how long I think I'm going to be on them, just so they can monitor. And 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 again, not everybody responds to steroids. It's it's we don't really know until we start checking the patient after they're right. on steroids. So um, that would right. be one thing. And then other medications that say like, you know, at, talk to your doctor, that's more important if you have closed angle glaucoma typically. Um, so there's not a lot that you need to just a hundred percent avoid no matter what. Um, and, right. and if there are any questions to ask, ask your doctor and they'll be able to guide you for sure. Right. Um, the last, this is the last question about food, and I, I assume you would have already mentioned it if there were an issue with um, either dairy or salt. Um, and then there's also a question about overeating or skipping meals, if that would impact um, yeah. anything at all. Yeah, no, good questions. Um, so dairy and salt, it, no, will not impact your glaucoma. Um, you know, I know that Salt can impact your blood pressure, um, but in terms of directly impacting your eye pressure, uh, no, it, 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 neither one of those will impact. Um, and I actually forgot, I'm sorry, what was the, the next? Skipping meals and overeating. Skipping meals, that's right. Um, no, not, no, it won't, it won't impact, it won't impact the glaucoma at all. So um, in that okay. sense, you know, whatever, I would say, do whatever your doctor recommends, your primary care physician. Right. I know intermittent fasting is so big right now. Exactly. That's a big thing right now. Um, but it, yeah, it won't impact your eyes at all. Great. Um, okay. Let's go to, um, in particular, so we've talked a lot about lifestyle tips, um, kind of things that you can do or avoid doing. What about lifestyle tips to kind of better incorporate your glaucoma treatment into your daily living, um, particularly for those who are worried about missing drops? Do you have suggestions for how to kind of build those into your schedule in a way that's more natural to remember to take them? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it's it's really hard. I know it's really easy on our end for us to just tell patients like, okay, do this and see you in a month or whatever. And I think it can be really hard to to remember some of these drops and people that are on multiple drops, it, it kind of takes over your life. Like you really, you, you're working around the clock with, with eye drops. So some, some things I suggest, um, I think one of the most common and something that helps me with other medications is just setting an alarm on my phone. Um, that's, that's become really common with patients and it's, it can be really helpful. Um, and you know, on, on your phone, you can set it to every single day. Like it, it just does it automatically. Um, or certain days, depending on if you have drops, which this is less common with glaucoma, but if you have certain things you only take on certain days, you can set, set it that way on your phone. So setting an alarm, I think, can be really helpful. Um, some people leave notes, like either put a post-it note like on your bathroom mirror or on the fridge or um, next to your bed, like things that where you think you'll see it like that you frequent a lot that can be that can be helpful um, other people actually put the drops next to their bed a lot of times or again places that they frequent a lot um, so that they'll actually see them and it'll remind them um, i think probably I, the main thing i would try if 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 i were someone who hadn't yet is i would try the try setting an alarm that can really really be helpful I think it's gotten so much easier with uh, our use of our phones, you know, before exactly. if you're not at home, you know, you don't have your alarm clock with you, but the phones have definitely helped, I think, um, improve life from that standpoint. Big time, big time. It's really helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. We, we just received one more question about um, sure. activities. Um, yeah. What about scuba diving? <laughs> Can increase ambient pressure with scuba diving increase eye pressure? Is scuba diving That's on the list? That's a great question. I agree. That's a great question. So if someone has really, if someone has severe glaucoma, a lot of people do actually recommend refraining from from things like scuba diving, which I I know is really hard for for people where that's a passion. But yeah, that um, so 
yes. If, if it's something that you do a lot and you have severe glaucoma, I would, I would definitely use caution. Um, and there's even actually kind of along those lines, um, I've had the question with even like if they're swimming and they're using goggles, like are those a problem? And if there are certain goggles that are, that are small and they fit like directly around your eye socket, I would not use those because those can put pressure on your eyeballs and cause the pressure to go up. I would use like wide ones that go like around your brow bone and you're like, you know, like your cheekbone area. So that way right, it's, they're right. not resting on your actual eyeball. Um, so in that sense, you know, take, just be careful when you're picking out your goggles, your swim goggles, if you use them. But yeah, what's, that's a really good question about scuba diving. I appreciate that someone brought that up. Um, that I, you know, exercise caution, talk to your doctor about that. If that's something that you, you like to do a lot and you have glaucoma. Definitely. Um, this next question is kind of related to other medications. Um, can you take dry eye drops and glaucoma drops at the same time? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't know if they mean literally simultaneously or be on, you know, both of them, use them both throughout the day at different points. Right. Absolutely. So you can definitely use them both. Um, and in terms of taking them at the same time, that's, that is fine as long as you just wait three to five minutes in between because you don't want to – basically, the eye can't hold that much uh, volume at once, like that much liquid. So you, you put one eye drop in, wait, a, wait three to five minutes, let the eye absorb as much as it can, and then you can put the other one in. Um, the order doesn't matter too much as long as you're waiting the full three to five minutes. Um, but so basically, yes, you can definitely take them both. The dry eye drops are great. We strongly encourage them because a lot of glaucoma drops can actually cause dry eye symptoms anyway. Um, so absolutely feel free to use the artificial tears. Just wait a couple minutes in between to make sure that your eye can absorb each drop um, adequately. Oh, that's great. Um, I think that actually comes to the end of our questions today. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit more information with um, the audience, and we'll come back to you in just a moment. Our next Bright Focus Glaucoma Chat will be on Wednesday, April 12th, and will be about glaucoma testing. Do I really have to do the visual field test again? Um, Dr. Kamat, we're so grateful for your time today and providing us so much information. Um, do you have some final remarks you might want to share with the audience before we conclude? Yeah, sure. And absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, basically, I think the moral of this whole story is, you know, do your best, go to your appointments, follow what your doctor says, take your medications as consistently as you can, and try to practice heart healthy lifestyle practices. So eat healthily with lots of uh, leafy greens, take a multivitamin, exercise three to four times a week if you can. Um, and you're basically doing um, a lot for your glaucoma with just doing all that. That's wonderful practical advice. Thank you so much again for your time today. And with that, this concludes the glaucoma chat. Thank you so much. The information provided in this recording is a public service of Bright Focus Foundation and is not intended to constitute medical advice. Please consult your physician for personalized medical, dietary, and or exercise advice. Any medications or supplements should only be taken under medical supervision. Bright Focus Foundation does not endorse any medical products or therapies.